We have some more NHL free agency news to discuss in this video. We have some RFAs that have come to terms with their teams. We have a UFA signing, as well as another member of the 2018 NHL draft class signing their entry level deal. We'll discuss all that coming up next. Hey everyone and welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. If you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. We review and discuss all 31 NHL teams. So if you're a huge hockey fan, consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So as I mentioned off the top, we have a variety of signings to discuss here from entry level deals to RFAs coming to terms as well as a UFA signing. So let's jump in and get started here with the entry level contract. Now the San Jose Sharks have come to terms with their 2018 first round draft selection, Ryan Merkley. Obviously Ryan Merkley is a very gifted offensive defenseman playing in the OHL for the Guelph Storm. Uh, Ryan Merkley is a bit of a controversial draft choice really. If you take a look at our, our draft videos and prospect videos we did previously, uh, we've discussed this player quite a bit. He certainly has high end talent, but there is some concern over his work ethic and his attitude. Uh, and so I know there's some teams that kind of passed uh, on this player in the NHL draft this summer. If all the concerns that a lot of scouting people have over Ryan Merkley are able to be worked on and overcome by the San Jose Sharks, then they're going to end up with a very gifted, offensively talented defenseman here. You could say Ryan Merkley has the same talent level as a lot of the guys taken in the top 10 of the first round here. So obviously they got themselves an interesting player, but they've come to terms on his entry level deal and uh, we'll be curious to keep an eye on his development here as he works towards making it to the NHL. Now in other news, the Washington Capitals have signed a restricted free agent defenseman Madison Bowie to a two-year contract at $1 million million dollars per season. Madison Bobby was able to get into 51 games last season with the Capitals putting up 12 points. Uh, I would fully suspect now that they've moved on Brooks Orpik from the roster that he'll likely get a little bit more of a, a bigger role, more playing time. Uh, so this is a short-term bridge contract to see how he develops and to see what his ceiling can be here at the NHL level. Um, but obviously I think it's a pretty fair contract for the defenseman as well as the Capitals here moving forward. The Pittsburgh Penguins have signed center iceman Derek Grant to a one-year contract valued of $650,000. Now, Derek Grant's a player I've mentioned before in the free agency videos we've done. Obviously, last season played with the Anaheim Ducks. Derek Grant has bounced around quite a bit in his NHL career. He's really found a difficult time finding a home really for more than one or two seasons. He's really changed teams quite a bit. I really thought the Anaheim Ducks were going to keep Grant in the fold. I thought Derek Grant played incredibly well for the Anaheim Ducks as a bottom six center um, for the Ducks in the last year. I was quite surprised when they started signing other players, which made it obviously clear that they were not bringing him back. Anaheim Ducks opted to sign other depth forwards like Carter Rowney and Brian Gibbons, and they gave them $1 million contracts where they could have likely signed Grant here for a smaller number and saved some money and kept a player they were already familiar with. But instead, Grant moves on yet again, gets signed to the Pittsburgh Penguins for one year at 650. So this is certainly a low risk contract for the Penguins. Kurt could turn out to be quite a good deal here. Obviously, they have a bit of a log jam at center ice. Uh, so all the different guys they have that can play center are obviously not all gonna be able to do that. Obviously, you get Crosby and Malkin are really the only two that are kind of shoe-ins at that position on this roster. I mean, they have Derek Broussard, who was kind of brought in to be that number three guy, but there has been some speculation. They may try him as a left winger. Uh, then they still have other players that they brought back, Matt Cullen. They still have Riley Sheehan in the fold and now Derek Grant. So obviously they can't all play center. So it'll be interesting to see what the Penguins do here with their roster and uh, to see how they shake things out. But they certainly have a lot more depth at the center ice position than they did last season. The biggest signing of the day we have the report on is Adam Lowry coming to terms with the Winnipeg Jets. Obviously, Lowry was an RFA waiting for an arbitration hearing, and that will no longer be necessary. Ended up signing a three-year contract with a value of $2.9 million per season. I think this is a pretty fair contract for the Jets and Adam Lowry. I personally, I think, based on what he gives to this team, he's a really hard worker, fits in very nicely in their bottom six. He did miss some time last year due to injury, uh, but had he played the full year, he would have projected to have been around a 38 to 40 point player. So overall, I like this contract for Lowry and the Winnipeg Jets. So the last piece of news I want to discuss today is actually on a player who didn't sign a contract, but that's RFA Brett Kulak of the Calgary Flames. Uh, the interesting news here is that while he's waiting for his arbitration hearing, he was actually put on waivers and he actually ended up clearing, which I, I in the beginning thought was a very bizarre move. It's not something you see very often. Obviously it's a player they're interested in keeping and signing, um, but obviously they're concerned over what he may get for a contract. Um, Brett Kulak only earned 650,000 last year, so he's certainly due for a raise. I think he certainly has earned that for sure. Uh, but I guess uh, looking at it from the business side of things, the Calgary Flames 
decided to use this as leverage. Obviously, this kind of shows that if he was given too much of a raise, they might be willing to walk away if they're willing to put on Han waivers and risk losing him for nothing anyway. Obviously, this is going to help them going into the arbitration hearing. There's one more piece of evidence they can uh, kind of show for their side of things that obviously his value isn't as high as he might think it is if he was put on waivers and he cleared. So just some interesting piece of news there. Not something you see very often, especially in this type of scenario. To the channel here, I hope you consider subscribing. We cover all 31 NHL teams and there's plenty of content here for all hockey fans to enjoy. So if you're new, hit that subscribe button. If you like this video, hit the like button as well. I'd really appreciate it if you did. As always, thank you very much for watching everybody. We will catch you next time.